All right, so why do we need to modulate signals? Well, it turns out, and why do we need to modulate them, and also why do we need radio waves? Uh, that's probably a question you've never asked yourself, but there's an important reason why uh, we use radio. And it's because electromagnetic waves propagate where sound and light do not. Now you may stop for a second and say, hey, wait a second, light is an electromagnetic wave. And it is. And you can think about waves from zero hertz up to hundreds of terahertz uh, as all being electromagnetic waves. Wireless systems generally are operating around a few kilohertz all the way up to, nowadays, even a couple hundred gigahertz. And the reason why we use uh, electromagnetic waves in these frequencies is that uh, they propagate far. Um, and they penetrate uh, a lot of materials. Um, for example, uh, low frequency waves like AM radio might have wavelengths on the order of uh, hundreds of meters and therefore really small structures like a house or a wall is pretty transparent uh, to something with such a long wavelength whereas light uh, has a very short wavelength and it may reflect uh, off of uh, very thin objects, uh, metals. Uh, so for a good example is the, the metal in your house would never affect an AM uh, radio wave. However, if you shined a light on a metal nail in the wall, it would reflect off. Um, and that's just because of the wavelength properties of the two. So longer wavelengths uh, can help out, um, but we don't uh, always transmit at uh, really low frequencies or long wavelengths. We oftentimes go into much higher frequencies. Uh, cell phones operate around 900 megahertz, Wi-Fi is at 2.4 and at 5 gigahertz, and uh, WiMAX now is coming out at 60 gigahertz. Um, and the reason why we choose different frequencies is that uh, really for two reasons. One is um, the attenuation of different frequencies is different. Uh, so for instance, one of the reasons why people choose 60 gigahertz is because it actually is absorbed uh, by the atmosphere. And you're thinking, well, why would I choose a frequency that gets absorbed? And it's uh, actually because if you're putting a bunch of wireless uh, routers in a building, uh, you don't want them all to conflict with one another and talk over one another. So if the range is naturally short, uh, it allows you to make a nice local network. Um, another reason why we go choose different frequencies is we'll learn later the data we can transmit is related to the bandwidth. And typically, we don't uh, modulate signals with any more than 10% of the bandwidth of our carrier signal. So 60 gigahertz, the fastest bandwidth signal we would have would be roughly 6 gigahertz. Um, so this is sort of the motivation for using electromagnetic waves um, uh, for transmitting information as opposed to sound or light. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is that a single tone, so cosine omega t, uh, carries power but it doesn't carry information. Um, We'll learn a little bit later on, but there's sort of a abstract notion of information as being represented in uh, the change of something. So if I were to come in and turn on a sinusoid and turn it off and turn it on, this would be like Morse code, for instance, the information is contained in the changes. Just like if I wrote a word that was all M's for all time, there's no way that could contain any information because the letters don't change. However, if I were to write the word mom, it's the change in the letters that carries some information for us. And this is a bit abstract, but basically what I want you to think about is the fact that a carrier itself uh, can't contain any information. Um, and we'll learn a little bit later on there is an exception to that, but we need a separate reference, and that has to do with single sideband. But enough about that. Um, what we're looking at, though, therefore, is to transmit information is we need to have a carrier that changes, and therefore we need uh, modulation. And that's how we convey information onto an electromagnetic wave so that we can transmit it uh, through the air. All right, so the information is a signal that's generally much lower in frequency than our carrier. As I said before, typically it's less than 0 0.1 times FC. Um, and that just has to do with the fact that um, uh, it's challenging to build circuits and systems that can actually use a wider bandwidth than 10%.
Um, the radio frequency signal is generally a uh, single carrier, cosine or sine. Uh, just a quick notice, the difference between cosine omega t and sine omega t. If we're just looking at a single sig signal, we can't tell the difference. We only know the difference between them and we have both present and we just notice a phase difference. So the carrier sine, cosine, uh, doesn't matter what you call it, it's only when you have a another version that has a 90 degrees phase shift you need to start paying attention to which one you call cosine and sine just so you can have them. In wireless systems we generally refer to these simply as the in phase and the quadrature signal and we just forget uh, the whole idea of cosine and sine. And the basic idea of modulation is just shown right down here. We're just going to take this low frequency signal and we are going to apply it onto a carrier. The carrier will allow transmission of the signal through the air at that specific frequency, so we get all the properties of the carrier's ability to travel uh, for whatever reason, and along with it, it's taking the information that we wish to convey. So modulation refers to turning information into electrical signals which are suitable for transition, a uh, transmission, sorry. Um, and just a quick thing on terminology, uh, an electrical signal is modulated by data, but not the other way around. Sometimes students tend to say the data is modulated on the signal. Um, it's actually the signal that gets modulated by the data, but that's just a nuance. So let's talk about uh, modulation types. So the signal properties are varied according to the information. So what do we mean by that? Uh, let's look at some of the properties of an RF signal. Uh, I've listed here in blue three different properties, the amplitude, uh, the frequency, and the phase. And these are three different knobs, if you will, that we can vary to convey information. Uh, this variation could be continuous as an analog modulation or in discrete steps uh, as in digital modulation. And just a quick look ahead, um, it turns out that we don't transmit perfect sharp edges, so even digital modulation ends up being uh, analog. And for all those analog engineers out there, you know that the digital world eventually has to become analog to get into the real world. So um, us analog designers still have an important job. All right, so um, the way we modulate a signal really depends upon um, a bunch of constraints. Uh, and generally, we make the decision based upon things like complexity, bandwidth, uh, sensitivity to noise, sensitivity to nonlinearity. Uh, one great example that I use is um, AM versus FM radio. And I got to be frank, uh, I don't even listen to the radio anymore. But back in the day, there was AM and FM radio. And AM is the simplest uh, radio, but oftentimes the quality wasn't as good as we would like. And um, initially, people said AM was the best choice because it uses the smallest bandwidth. And FM was a bad idea because it uses more bandwidth than an AM signal. But after a while, people learned, uh, in particular, Shannon showed us that um, we can actually increase the signal to noise ratio by increasing the bandwidth that we use. And so the way to think about it is in frequency modulation, if we take a signal and use a very large frequency modulation, we can actually increase the signal to noise. Um, so here's a great example where we would uh, decide to do frequency modulation instead of amplitude modulation because it'll allow us to use a wider bandwidth and as we'll learn later that actually translates into a better signal to noise ratio and that's why your FM radio sounds better is because it can use a wider bandwidth than AM and because of that um, it can get better sound quality.